Hey everyone, it's Kyle from Cool Collectibles back again for another review. This time it's the Flame Toys Furai Action Optimus Prime. For all your Transformer needs, click the link in the description below to head on over to Big Bad Toy Store. They ship worldwide, so definitely check them out. Alright, if you follow the channel, you'll know that most of my Transformers collecting is with the Masterpiece series. Um, I don't really collect non-transforming Transformers, uh, with the exception being the Bumblebee from uh, 3.0. Um, and I do also have the uh, DLX Optimus Prime pre-orders as well. Uh, now, I've only ever heard good things about Flame Toys, and I've never actually uh, bought or collected any of their figures. Uh, but once I saw this uh, Furai action, um, I thought I'd jump in and give them a go. Uh, now, Flame Toys, I don't really know too much about them, to be honest. Uh, but uh, looking at their price range, I was actually surprised at how large the uh, price differences are between their figures. Um, now the cheapest ones I've seen are the model kits and um, I've just got no patience or skill really uh, to put together those kits so this Furai action was pretty much uh, straight up my alley being pre-assembled uh, plus having uh, some of the weathered paint applications that I'll uh, give you guys a closer look at in a second. Um, but uh, the price ranges, um, they also have this series called the uh, Kura Kara something or other, uh, which don't seem to be too much bigger than this, but I think um, either have premium uh, paint application or more uh, die cast, which uh, I guess increases the price because some of the prices are uh, astronomical, to be honest. Um, there was an 8-inch Optimus Prime in their Kura, whatever that series is called, and it was uh, bordering on $500 or $450 or something. Um, so I'm not sure why they're so much more expensive and whether or not the die cast and so on uh, justifies that price. Uh, but uh, overall, from what I can see of this Furai Action uh, series, um, I absolutely love it. And I think uh, these are right in that sort of sweet spot uh, for price versus uh, quality. Um, and articulation and so on. Uh, but just quickly going through the box, uh, not too much to write home about. Uh, it does give you a couple of nice photos of the figure on the back and some of the articulation you, you can get into. The official uh, promo photos really do show the range of motion for this thing um, and it is pretty outstanding for a figure. But that's probably what you expect for a non-transforming figure. Now, this is from the IDW comic series. Um, which I've never actually read to be honest. Um, it does, if this is the style, it does have a uh, Gundam or Gundam style, which uh, I don't really uh, collect too much of or have too much of an interest in to be honest. I've never gotten into that series, uh, but uh, having a closer look at this Optimus, I think it uh, does look pretty good. Uh, from a stand perspective, it comes with uh, this pretty nice uh, option to display. Uh, it comes with this. Uh, connecting piece which you can dis, uh, disassemble um, and you can slide this around along the back there to, to line up uh, depending on what uh, sort of dynamic pose you want and these uh, translucent pieces can just come off um, that you can rearrange so that's a, a nice option if you've got some light source coming out from underneath um, and this sort of fits around the, the waist or the legs uh, pretty well and I think you can you can also take that off and um, shove that up his, uh, his butt there in that hole there uh, for some of those uh, jumping uh, aerial shots so um, a pretty good option for for display and uh, just going by the instructions here it's uh, called the I'm assuming that's cross board or X board um, so at least they've got instructions there on how to put that all together accessories wise it doesn't come with too much just uh, four swap out hands and his iconic blaster um, it does look pretty good the paint application He's a bit rough, uh, looks more like, um, almost like a snow rather than sort of silver metallic wash um, or weathering. So they, I think they could have painted that a little bit better. Um, there's no die cast or anything in any of uh, this piece that I can see. Uh, but overall, it's a pretty nice style. Um, and they swap out hands. The sculpts are pretty good. Um, and the options are your standard uh, gun holding hands that you have there and the open palm sort of action-y type hands um, or you can sort of palm the, uh, the rifle in like so something like that so some decent options there and he comes standard out of the box with these closed fists 
but um, I'll just uh, set him up for a closer look at the figure. So as I was saying before, this Furai action series, uh, of which this Optimus is the first, um, and only that I can see, I don't see any other pre-orders of um, any subsequent figures, uh, but they are about $20 to $30 more expensive than the equivalent model kit, and I think that price, for me at least, is uh, more than justified. Uh, the paint application is, I think, much better than uh, the standard model kit, which is uh, doesn't have any weathering at all, so it's almost a, a bit too clean and a bit too bright uh, for my liking. I love the the weathering on on this figure, and of course the uh, the bonus for me, of course, is um, the fact that it's pre-assembled. Uh, I did double check some of the reviews of the model kits um, and how they uh, come packaged and so on, and having all of the separate panels and pieces that you have to sort of cut out and then put together. I would uh, definitely say that I would screw that up somehow. Uh, I'm not sure if this pre-assembled version has some sort of uh, better mechanisms for the articulation or not. Um, I do love the articulation in this hip area, which I'll go through in a second. Um, so I'm not sure how, as part of the model kit, you sort of put it all together. Um, because I could just see now that this is all put together for me, um, I would have definitely struggled to get it all hanging together nicely. Uh, but as you can see, the style is very nice, um, articulation wise, I'll go through each point as I get to it, uh, but there's, I can't remember how many points of articulation, but uh, there are a lot, um, and it does have a fantastic range of motion too, so you get all that action in the head there. The sculpt, I think, immediately recognizable as Optimus, um, in that sort of uh, comic style. Now I did see a pre-order for the model kit of the G1 version, um, so I'm definitely hoping that they announce a uh, Furai Action version instead of the model kit. Um, so that was the head. Uh, with the arms here, I actually struggled to move these uh, shoulder pieces, uh, but I then realized that uh, this joint here sort of goes up that far, and then this joint doesn't move any further than that. It's within this mechanism at the, the bottom here, as you can see there, and that uh, allows you to go up to quite a high degree. Uh, which is nice and so this uh, shoulder joint here pretty much just does the rotation back and forth um, but uh, the articulation isn't hindered or anything like that with that range of motion which is really good uh, the back here just quickly I'm not sure what these wings or fins are to be honest I'm not sure if the comics sort of explain why that is as part of his transformation or so on but um, they do feel a little that's probably the the most delicate part of the the figure that I can feel um, so uh, just be careful how you flex that and place your fingers as you're moving him around. Uh, from a chest perspective, unfortunately I can't see how these uh, this chest piece here opens up. Um, I was actually hoping whether or not that would open up and reveal some sort of matrix or something in there, but it, uh, it doesn't do that. Uh, but uh, the range of motion is really, really nice. So they've got the joint at the top there. There's no, it, there doesn't feel to be any risk of paint rub. Um, that I can see so it uh, gives you quite a bit of range of motion and then you can move the waist there as well to, to get additional rotation so I think um, from the rear here the rotation is stopped by these static and fixed in place back hip pieces whereas the front hip pieces you can uh, move them all over the place you can lull them down like this and uh, get a bit more motion um, you can then lift them up to fill any sort of gap and this hip mechanism that I was talking about before is uh, what uh, gives you extra range of motion. So it looks like it's pushed up high now, but then you can sort of move it down via that hinge that you might be able to make out just in there. And it gives you that extra bit of motion downwards, and then you can really raise the leg up. You can pretty much get him back all the way like so, um, out to the side. And the joints feel fairly tight. They're all sort of friction joints, so I'm not sure if they're going to loosen too much over time or not. Um, but uh, overall, they feel fairly good. And if you've got it down like that, you can then sort of move this on a hinge. Um, you can sort of see the hinge there. You can sort of move that down as well and close that gap a bit like so. So there's plenty of options there on how you want to pose them up on the, on the hips. Um, for all the sort of dynamic poses that, uh, that are in the uh, promotional photos. Uh, from the knee perspective, 
I love the mechanism. So it's got these uh, fake wheels here. They're not rubber. Um, rubber would have been an extra bonus, I guess. Um, but I love the way the, the knees collapse and these collapse. So if you fold the knee up, that sort of collapse away. And then it's sort of just, a, it's like a seamless motion to give you uh, quite a range of motion in the knee there. So you can get him into some of those, um, if I just lift that back up, um, if I can. Let's get the fingernails in there. So you can get him into some really nice sort of crouching poses like so. Um, and then you can have him sort of bending that back something along those lines. So you get him into some crouching poses and holding the rifle, etc. Um, I love the ankle piece. There's lots of rocking motion there, back and forth as well. And then this piece here, I actually thought this piece was broken, uh, but it's on like a little ball joint that you can see there. And so you can sort of rotate that and fill up any sort of gaps that might happen when you're posing the feet. Um, so Overall, I think this guy has fantastic articulation. The look um, and style is really, really nice. Um, I love the subtle weathering all over. There's sort of a bit of black wash. There's the sort of um, weathered scraping on the metal, a bit of rust on the front here, um, and along the, the silver parts of his thighs. So overall, they've done a, a really good job of the, the weathered effect. I think the model kits uh, look, they look nice in their own right, but um, a little bit too clean for my liking. Um, I think people can touch it up with their own sort of paint skills, which um, I absolutely lack. Um, so I'm definitely glad uh, they've given this option um, for collectors like me who are either impatient or less skilled in uh, model building. Um, but overall, as the first figure that I've got from Flame Toys, I'm, I'm definitely seeing why they have such a good reputation. Um, in the uh, transformer community or the robot community um, in their figures everything is nice you don't really see too much of the joints as they bend like the elbows here have a great range of motion as well getting up to you know well beyond the uh, the 90 degree almost to almost uh, to 45s in in that in that way um, and there's the rotation there and they they don't sort of um expose any weird joints as you do it it all seems uh, just like a robot should um, in articulating its joints. So I think uh, they've done a fantastic job there. Some people say, you know, the, it's, not really, it's not really a transformer unless it transforms, but uh, I think uh, similar to the 3A DLX uh, figures from the, the Bumblebee movie, I think if uh, they have it at this level of quality um, and articulation, then I guess the, the form and factor um, definitely outweigh the, the need for it to actually transform which uh, would probably introduce his own design uh, compromises anyway so overall i think uh, with the articulation and what you can get out of this figure um, on display in dynamic poses and so on i think it's a fantastic figure um, and i'm definitely glad i got into it um of uh, i'll be waiting for the uh, or hopefully they announce the uh, g1 optimus prime um, but uh, i have seen the Megatron uh, IDW model kit um, and I'm just waiting for them also to announce that in this Furai action series. So hopefully this isn't just the only one in the series um, and any of the model kits that they do announce um, I'm hoping they also release the uh, pre-assembled version in this series. Uh, but uh, hopefully you like that quick look at this Furai action Optimus Prime. I will, I will be posting up um, some more pose photos and so on on the Facebook page, so hopefully you can head over there and uh, give the page a like um, and stay tuned for some of the upcoming photos. Um, hopefully you can give uh, this video a like as well and subscribe for uh, future videos. I've got also in my uh, BBTS haul recently, I've got the Vega and Bison SH Figure Arts uh, Street Fighter figure reviews uh, to come. So hopefully you can um, subscribe and stay tuned for that. Uh, but until then, thanks again and I'll uh, talk to you guys soon. Cheers, bye.